वेलकम टू द ई चैनल टुडे वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग ऑडिटरी बिन स्टेम रिस्पॉन्सेज ऑडिटरी बिन स्टेम रिस्पॉन्सेज वर इनिशली डिस्क्राइब इन 1971 सेवेंटी वन बाई जुएट एंड विल्सन ही डिस्क्राइब इट टू बी ए फैसिनेटिंग स्टडी ऑफ द न्यूरोलॉजिकल ट्रांसमिशन ऑफ एन ऑडिटरी स्टमुलस फ्रॉम ईयर टू द ब्रेन वैन इलेक्ट्रोड आर प्लेस ओवर द स्कैल्प एंड ऑडिटरी स्टमुलस इज गिवन seven wave forms are recorded which happen sequentially in a certain time frame and these seven wave form represent auditory brain stem responses seven waves represent a particular area of the hind brain for a few wave certain areas are not very clearly defined so to keep it simple we will just name the probable sites of generation of these waves so the wave 1 comes from the distal portion of the 8th nerve or the auditory nerve wave 2 comes from the proximal portion of the 8th nerve wave 3 comes from the cochlear nucleus wave 4 comes from the superior olivatory complex and wave 5 formation happens at the level of lateral lamniscus termination in the inferior colliculus for wave 6 and 7 formation sites are poorly understood but they may come from medial geniculate body the entire waveform should be computed within 5 to 7 millisecond following the onset of stimulus now let's see how these waves are recorded in the clinic there are three surface electrode used at a time the first electrode is placed over the forehead known as the ground electrode The second electrode is placed over the vertex and the third electrode is placed behind the pinna or over the mastoid bone. The stimulus is presented to the patient through standard headphones and sometimes through the use of an insert earphone. The stimulus used is mostly click which occurs at a rate of 11 to 25 clicks per second. Now we see the application of auditory brainstem responses in our clinical practice. establishing the hearing threshold by barrett test gives a piece of very important information which is hearing threshold especially in a newborn baby uncooperative children difficult to test patients or a malingering patient abr threshold assessment is generally done with either click or tone bus stimuli stimulus is initially presented at a level of 75 decibels and wave 5 is identified and its latency measured if no waves are present at this level the intensity of stimuli is increased by 10 decibel until all reliable and repeatable waveforms are generated the test then proceeds by reducing the intensity of stimuli by 10 decibels and again measuring and recording the latency of wave 5 as the intensity of stimuli is reduced the latency of wave 5 will increase and the amplitude of wave 5 will decrease when wave 5 can no longer be seen this intensity level may be taken as threshold of hearing which is usually within 10 decibels of actual hearing since the threshold search is commonly done using click stimuli it may be noted that frequency specific information is not accurate in this test because click stimuli normally stimulate the cochlea between 1500 and 4000 hertz hence this test can underestimate or misidentify a patient as normal who manifests a low frequency hearing loss or even it may overestimate the hearing loss in high frequency hearing deficit patient for frequency specific information middle latency responses may be used with the tone bus stimuli at 500 1000 2000 and 4000 hertz so barrett test has to be interpreted carefully having scientific knowledge of click and tone bus stimuli contemplating the sites of waveform generation and in context with reports of other test and clinical judgment of the clinician apart from hearing threshold estimation in the above category patients the other uses of abr include neurodiagnostic especially in cases of asymmetrical hearing loss tinnitus and vertigo ABR is also used in a special group of patients who have normal autoacoustic emissions still is not able to hear the sound and there might be a problem in the auditory nerve pathways 
and this kind of hearing loss can be explained by auditory neuropathy. Auditory neuropathy is a group of disorder where there is some lesion in the auditory nerve or auditory nerve pathways. But the cochlea and the conductive apparatus of hearing is normal. And these patients, though forms a very less number, but sometimes it comes as a surprise when pure tone audiometry is normal, yet the patient claims he has not heard. In such cases, the diagnosis of auditory neuropathy should be considered and a better test done. The other use of ABR could be in intraoperative monitoring of 8th canyon nerve when neurosurgeons or neurotologists are operating on 8th canyon nerve and they wish to check the integrity of the auditory nerve. So, you can understand now that ABR is a very handy research and clinical tool in many clinical situations that affects our hearing. If you are still watching this video, that means you have got some information about auditory brainstem responses by now. Please don't forget to like the video and subscribe the channel for future updates. Thank you.